Today we're going to do a video on the origin of the plastic worm. What you see here is what's evolved since I was a boy fishing. I was fortunate enough to come up through this and got to watch it grow and develop into what it is today. But all of these things you see here when I was a young lad fishing, weren't available. There was one line available, and it was by the man that created them. A guy by the name of Nick Cream, back in 1949. Nick Cream was a machinist who loved to fish, and he's from the Akron, Ohio, he had contacts with uh, DuPont and was able to get, get some advice on some formulas and whatnot that he could try in his own basement to come up with a plastic worm. Back then, anglers were already fishing with harnesses that they would rig up live night crawlers on, but Nick wanted to uh, make a plastic worm that looked just like a night crawler and save himself a lot of time and effort. So he began to experiment around and in 1949 he cast his first die, poured his first die of a plastic worm. And what you see here on this table is just a very small amount of what's available today. But give you an idea of where it all started. It started with a, uh, the very first worm that he created was a replica of the harness three hook. He put a earth colored worm on there. We call them red. Back in the day they didn't come in but four colors. Blue, black, red and purple and there were six inches and eventually you could get an eight inch they came in three sizes a four inch a six inch and an eight inch but the original shape was identical to an actual night crawler and looked just like this So we'll clear all this out here for a little bit. But it looked just like this night crawler, this one here. And to show you how capitalism works in the in America, this is a prime example of what happened from the 60s up to today. It went from this alone and this was on a three hook harness. It had a spinner on the front of it and beads. And it had no way to get down in the brush to where fish were hanging out. Mainly could just fish it in clear water. No way you're going to fish it in brush. But just so happened, as a part of the capitalism of the worm industry, an unknown angler, not that he doesn't have a name, but nobody really knows who he is. Who He, he didn't reveal his name, or it was a hearsay story that turned out to be true. He was fishing with the replacements that he would order from Nick Cream, who still lived in Ohio. And people began to order more and more of his product, just the replacements, not the whole harness. And they were all coming out of Texas, around Tyler. So eventually he moved his company there, 
and begin to mass produce these uh, replacement worms. The harness was a, a thing of the past. See if I've got a little picture of the harness. This is what it looked like. As you can see. That's the original plastic worm. That's where it all started. I remember it like it was yesterday. I caught three bass on it the very first time I used it. Uh, it didn't take long to change my mind because after about 30 minutes I had caught three bass. I was standing on the dam of a, about a five acre pond. Throw it out and those fish were tearing it up. So you see there's really not much difference. Just a six inch. But there was a need that developed in the 60s in the South that for something that would get down in brush piles because they had uh, built a lot of lakes and reservoirs and backed up a lot of water with dams and there was just no way to fish for those bass with this uh, harness type setup. So there was a man that came up with a way he took a bell sinker and took the uh, brass pin out of it ran that on his line tied a hook on the end of his line and put a replacement worm like this on it and turned it over and buried the hook in the body of the worm. Thus the Texas rig was born. Now a lot of people may not even understand why the Texas rig came about. A lot of people say, well, well, it's maybe just to give it more action. It has nothing to do with it. It doesn't, the worm doesn't need a weight on it to help it catch fish. Matter of fact, if anything, it would probably hinder its ability to catch fish. But what it did need was a way to get down in those brush prowls that had been created when they bulldozed down land to build lakes and reservoirs back in the south in the early 60s. And this guy from uh, Tyler, Texas was fishing at that time, the name of it was Lake Tyler, fishing it. And uh, he came up with this idea to get it down in there and start catching the uh, fish that were hanging out in those brush piles. Thus, the uh, Texas rig was born. Had nothing to do with anything but getting it where it needed to be. Now, there's worms of different sorts that don't need to have a weight on them. If you're not fishing in heavy cover, then you don't even need to put a weight on your worm. I mean, the Texas rig's not going to make you catch any more fish. Now, back when these worms were developed, the manufacturer was telling you to let the fish strike it. Once the fish struck it, let it run. And then set the hook once he swallowed it. And that's great. I still use that technique today when in, um, in open water. But it's obvious that in uh, heavy cover, you can't do that. So the industry began to develop hooks that would uh, serve the purpose of setting it as soon as you felt the little bite, the little tip on the end of the line. And everybody who's caught a bass with a worm knows exactly what that is. But it all started with this right here back in 1949. It took about a decade for it to really get popular. I started fishing with them on a regular basis back in the 60s. I kept this lure here as long as I could until I finally lost it. But by then we had moved over to the purple worm. It was a single weedless hook. We didn't turn it over and embed it. There wasn't any need to because we weren't fishing heavy cover. We just used the weedless hook, threw it out in fairly clear, unobstructed water, maybe grass, whatnot, 
fishing in shallow water, you're not going to fish in deep water with a, without a weight on it. But we caught bass after bass after bass. There's just no way I can tell you how many. Catching limits out of rivers, lakes, backwater. It didn't take long for it to become our favorite way to fish. But just check out the things that have evolved since then. Just for an example, the little tube plastic that you put the jig heads in. You got the flukes. A company by the name of Havoc. Then you've got the ones with the curly tails. All of this came through American capitalism. Everybody's trying to make it just a little better. And this is my favorite yet today. Matter of fact, this color and the purple color are my two favorites. The six inch, I'll use a bigger one when I have it or when I can find it. But that has caught me more fish than anything I've ever fished with. And either this color or the purple color. And we, as it evolved, we could eventually get some black and yellows. We could catch a, we would catch a lot of fish on the black and yellows as well. And then you've got the purple colored flip tails. I haven't caught near as many fish on these as I have the original. That's it right there. Get it in different sizes. I mean, I'm a big believer in the bigger the bait, the bigger the fish, but I mean, earthworms get pretty big. I mean, they'll get 8, 10 inches, 12 inches long. I've seen them that big. And just so happened that back in the 60s, there was a, in the late 50s, early 60s, there were at the same time the fiberglass back bass boat was being developed, the sonar fish finder was being developed, a, a very primitive version of that, nothing like this there are today. And because there was a need, the Texas rig was developed. And you put all of that together and, and all of that little by little helped this industry develop into what it is today. Now, there are going to be a few changes from here after, I'm sure. But the further you get away from the original, then the less successful you're going to be. And here it is right here. Think about all the different kind of hooks. This is just a drop in the bucket to the different companies out there. The main thing is it never got too far away from the original. Originals are usually best. Think about it. Kentucky Fried Chicken original. The original Coca-Cola. What happened when they tried to go away from the original Coke? They started losing sales. The original version of Kentucky Fried Chicken is still the number one seller. And it's that way in every area of American capitalism. And why is that? Well, it's because of the time and the research put into the original need. Everybody else is just flipping a buck on the original. Everybody else and all these lure companies and plastic worm companies are still making money on Nick Cream's original idea. And the Cream Lure Company is still in existence today. You can buy the Scoundrel and I think a 4 inch, 6 inch, and an 8 inch. Several different colors. They begin to put colored tails on them, 
give them a little more flair. But I've caught so many fish and probably caught more fish on just a straight color. I mean, this one here looks more like an earthworm than any other. Now, back in the day when they all started, there wasn't that a lot of different water clarities like they are today. But now you've got a different color, a different style for any type of water clarity, different depths of fishing. You got the stick worm, the Senko. It's just developed into a massive industry. And I've been blessed to be a part of it and watch it grow and to catch my share of fish out of it. And we'll continue to. But the longer I fish, I have really simplified the way I fish. I've decided just to fish for large fish now. I'll always have a worm. I'll have a small one like this, but I'll always have some big ones with me. Talking about big worms, let's take a look at this one. This was like a show demonstration, but that is 18 inches, and it's a inch in diameter at the head. You can see the harness it's made to sit on, so I'm sure we're not going to fish with worms that large, but there are 12 inch worms available. I haven't seen 12 inch in the original shape. You can get them with the uh, curly tails on them, which I don't, not my favorite by a long shot. This right here, if you'll stick with it, it'll catch you more fish. And if you're in shallow water, you don't even need a, a weight on it. The weight again is for fishing in deep water, deep cover to get it down in there to where the fish are. And believe me, there are a lot of big bass that hang out in shallow water behind maybe a single stump or single log, single little b patch of grass in the hot summer in the shade just waiting for some easy catch to come by. And there's nothing more original or feel more lifelike to a bass than an earthworm. It's easy for him to swallow. He doesn't have to chase it. They've developed them to a point that they actually feel like worms. They put, they, in the 80s they begin to put salt on them, give them fruit flavored colors to get, the, get away from the plastic taste. And they all had their part. Like some of these have got salt on them. This one here, this is, it's got salt on it. And there's some others in here, the uh, baby bass, I don't know where it went, but the baby bass has got salt on it. These, I've caught some big fish on those. Just put a jig head on them. But again, it all started with one of these with three hooks in it on a harness with a spinner on the front and some beads on it. So I thought I'd share that with you and uh, next time you're out fishing with a worm maybe you'll think about some of this and realize that it just didn't happen by chance. It happened because there were people that m met needs and continue to meet needs and we're the beneficiaries of it. So thanks for watching YouTube.